We got some breaking news coming in with our panel right now. We have just heard that the Maine, in Maine, the Secretary of State has now disqualified former President Trump from the ballot there. Now we're talking about Colorado and Maine. We will see what the Supreme Court does. With that, let's bring in our panel, former White House Press Secretary Ari Fleischer, Olivia Beavers, congressional reporter for Politico, and Fox News senior political analyst Juan Williams. Uh, Ari, to you first on this news coming out of Maine, and then there were two uh, still waiting for the Supreme Court to decide on Colorado. What do you make of this latest decision? What are the Democrats so afraid of? Are they afraid of democracy? They don't want to have somebody on the ballot because they don't think they can beat him fair and square, so they knock him off the ballot. Look, Trace, this is so anti-democratic. I hope the Supreme Court strikes this down. But this is the violation of the norms, and you can't complain that Trump violates the norms when the Democrats go out and do the exact same thing, even worse in this instance, themselves. Yeah, you know, it's interesting, Juan, because you have in Colorado, you have the Colorado Republican Party that is trying to appeal, trying to get this thing taken away before the Supreme Court jumps in on this. And you have a lot of people saying, even the Secretary of State saying, you know what, uh, Trump is, is guilty of insurrection, but he's not. And that's a key part of this whole thing. Well, that's a key point. Now, the, the contrary point, Trace, is that it doesn't require in the Constitution a conviction. It's that someone would have participated in an insurrection. And I think that what you're getting here is, though, that it's pretty clear that the Republican base is responding to this as somehow their rights to vote for Trump being taken away from them. And it's giving the Trump campaign a boost mm -hmm. in the Republican primary. This is doing no damage to Trump in terms of the immediate political consequence. And his argument is all about... Uh, you know, Democrats or the establishment trying to take away his right uh, to run for president. The, the other question, I guess, is Republican parties around the country, the Republican Party uh, in Colorado, uh, you know, challenging the Supreme Court ruling there. And the question, again, is, it, you know, the donors really think that their money should be going to a GOP party to represent Donald Trump or to get Republicans elected? Yeah, and it's interesting because I want to put this map up on the screen, Olivia, so we can all look at it. These are the states with active litigation to ban Trump from the ballot. Clearly, it's not going to happen in all of them, but there are a bunch. And you look at what's happening across the country, and Juan makes a fair point there, is that it feels a little like the former president's due process is being taken away. Well, that's sort of what the onus of the Supreme Court is going to have to decide is whether they're going to weigh in and, and you can you just can disqualify a presidential candidate, one who is expected to be, you know, the one winning the general nomination of a party or if the courts decide. But um, it's going to be, uh, you know, lawyers are asking for an expedited answer as these other decisions await the um, the the courts um, in different mm -hmm. states. And I think we're going to, you know, probably be seeing a decision hopefully before March where you see a lot of primaries. But even then, we have primaries yep. coming up just in next month. We should, we should hope so. Let's move on now to the rest of the candidates because Nikki Haley was asked this. We played it a couple of times, but it's important to watch it again. Nikki Haley was asked during town hall about the Civil War, and she said this. Watch. I think the cause of the Civil War was basically how government was going to run, the freedoms and what people could and couldn't do. In the year 2023, it's astonishing to me that you answer that question without mentioning the word slavery. What do you want me to say about slavery? So, and today, very quickly, Nikki Haley tried to clean that answer up a little bit. Watch this and I'll get your response, Ari. We want every person to have the freedom of speech, religion, to live their life in any way without anyone doing anything to hamper that. That's what this was about. So if it required clarification of saying, yes, the Civil War was about slavery, I'm happy to do that. But look, I know it very well. I'm a Southern governor. When a candidate says if it requires clarification, Ari, that's a walk back. And it's plain and simple. That is clearly a walk back. What are your thoughts? Well, it was two bad answers. And the, the second answer, what do you want me to say about slavery? The answer should have been immediately, slavery was an abomination. That, you don't say, what do you want me to say? You say it. Um, but look, Chase, I, I think this is going to be a tempest in a teapot for most Republican voters. The mainstream media is going crazy on this issue. The Democrats mm -hmm. want to go crazy on this issue. But the worst statement any candidate ever made 
was Joe Biden. When Joe Biden, running for vice president against Mitt Romney, gave a speech where he said, Republicans want to put you all back in chains. So if you want to talk about the use of slavery and threats against the other party, the worst thing you could possibly say, Joe Biden accusing Republicans of wanting to support slavery. I'll condemn that all day long. That is a far more serious statement that Joe Biden made than Nikki Haley's flub. I want to play this. This is uh, Ron DeSantis on Nikki Haley's statement. Watch. I noticed that um, uh, Nikki Haley has had some problems with with some basic American history. Uh, She's asked a very simple question and responded with just a really incomprehensible word salad about this and that. Is it a fair point, Juan? I've got about a minute left. I'd like to get both you and Olivia in. Your thoughts? Well, I think this is all a commentary on the sad state of discourse about race in the Republican Party. Nikki Haley's trying to avoid being called woke by DeSantis and any of her critics. Mm -hmm. She wants to make sure that she's not seen as being too open to the idea that slavery caused the Civil War, which, I mean, it's just basic history. Yeah, uh, a quick wrap up to you, Olivia. I'm just concerned if you think Ron DeSantis going into Iowa in the caucuses in a couple of weeks, does he need to come in a strong second or leave it all behind? I mean, he does. And Nikki Haley has been really kind of pushing up against him. But this is a fight for second place, as we all know. And of course, he's sitting there trying to take jabs at Haley. They've been going at each other with Donald Trump at, you know, some polls indicating he has a 50 point percentage mm-hmm. lead. So um, it's, yeah. it's interesting that with them taking shots over this issue. It is interesting. Olivia Beavers, Juan Williams, Ari Fleischer, thank you all. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.